This is Democracy Watch. So, Mark, the state we've all been watching lately, that's North Carolina, we've covered how your firm and other firms have been winning cases related to fair maps across the country. But North Carolina is one of the few states that's actually going in the wrong direction. Um, and they're, ad they're adopting right now a hugely gerrymandered Republican map. So talk about the new lawsuit that's been filed and the extent to which you believe it can actually succeed at getting fair maps. Yeah, so look, the Republicans in North Carolina, like so many other places, are just contemptuous of fair maps or contemptuous of the Constitution, the Voting Rights Act, you name it. And my team has already, as you mentioned, filed a lawsuit against them over this new map. To understand what's going on here, you have to remember that uh, North Carolina had engaged in um, incredible acts of gerrymandering in the past. We, uh, My team had first sued because they had racially gerrymandered and we won, and then they had partisan gerrymandered and we won. Then they went up to the U.S. Supreme Court on the, the fringe independent state legislature theory, and we won. Um, so now they've come back and they've passed a new gerrymander afresh. And so we've sued uh, uh, under the Constitution. And, uh, you know, you can probably tell from my recitation of the history how I think this is all going to turn out. You know, it's quite exhausting, but it's incredibly important that we continue to fight for fair maps in North Carolina. Will the North Carolina Supreme Court litigate this issue? And if so, is there any indication as to how they might rule? Yeah, so this case is in federal court. So this won't go to the North Carolina Supreme Court. This is going to go from a federal court uh, in North Carolina, presumably then um uh, appealed up through the federal system, but uh, but no, this is not a uh, this is not a state court case, and and that's really important to keep in mind because you know the 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 last case that we won that I mentioned led to the effort to advance the fringe independent state legislature theory that did go through the North Carolina Supreme Court that did go up through the state court system, but as you know. The Republicans then won electoral control of that state Supreme Court. So this case involves federal constitutional claims, and it is in federal court. Now, this lawsuit will bring claims under the 14th and 15th Amendments to the Constitution. We've talked a lot in this series about Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. So how do these claims differ from Voting Rights Act claims? Yeah, so this is really, really important. So the Voting Rights Act is a statute that says you cannot dilute uh, minority voting strength. Uh, and so when we look at the lawsuits that have been brought under that, um, and all of those are on democracydocket.com. So if anyone you want to read the actual pleadings, you can. Uh, but when you look at the lawsuits like in Alabama and Louisiana and Georgia, the fundamental claims there was that the statute was violated, the Voting Rights Act was violated because the legislature failed to create additional black opportunity districts. So this is a federal constitutional claim that is that says that the Republicans in North Carolina sorted black voters on account of their race um, and moved them in and out of districts uh, to achieve their mission. So it may be that 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 their ultimate goal was partisanship, right? You look at the map and you say, well, this is a pretty good, you know, uh, partisan gerrymander for Republicans. But what the lawsuit says, and which I think is true, is that they used race as a proxy. They used race. They just targeted black voters. They said, we're going to move black voters around because that's going to allow us to achieve our goal. And that violates the U.S. Constitution. And North Carolina Republicans should know that because I beat them already once in the U.S. Supreme Court on exactly that theory after the 2010, uh, uh, 2010 uh, census maps were drawn in that state. Well, to that point, um, insofar as precedent is respected, do you presume that if and when this gets to the U.S. Supreme Court that they'll rule in you know against republicans they should look i mean the fact is the 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 court has been pretty clear on its racial gerrymandering us constitutional theories right the, the these have been very very well settled law and in fact there have been a lot of conservative justices who are offended by the use of race in this fashion. So it's been actually a unique area of the law in which you've seen, you know, when I won the case in North Carolina, I mentioned, which was Cooper v. Harris. And again, you can find that on Democracy Docket. I, you know, we won, I won Justice uh, Ginsburg and the liberals at the time, but also won a number of the conservative justices there because uh, it, so, so we, sh it should win at the U.S. Supreme Court, but we will wait and see. 
And just as a quick reminder for anybody watching, if you're not yet signed up for Democracy Docket, it's the free news outlet Mark founded to focus on everything voting in elections. Uh, and we'll definitely see any updates that happen in North Carolina and across the country in that outlet. So if you're not yet subscribed, click the link on this screen to subscribe. Mark, has this Supreme Court, this 6-3 conservative court, ruled on this issue at all or, or any other um, 14th or 15th uh, in, amendment to the U.S. Constitution issue? So we there is actually a case pending before the U.S. Supreme Court out of South Carolina, which is a intentional discrimination, racial gerrymandering claim, uh, claim. For those of you who are following the ins and outs of districts, this is Nancy Mace's district. If you notice, Nancy Mace used to pretend to be more of a moderate, and that's because she was in a very swingy district. I'm not saying she was a moderate. Don't don't worry, Brian. But she pretended to be one because she used to be in a very swingy district. And then what happened is the Republican legislature, when they redrew the map, they moved Black voters out of her district to make it presumably safe for Republican. But they, again, they did it by, by focusing on race, by, by saying, we don't want these Black voters in her district, which is why she now kind of like has, I think, moved even further into Magaland, but that's more your expertise than mine. Now, now, and, she's, and, now she's trotting along the Capitol wearing her Scarlet Letter t-shirt everywhere to get on the <laughs> max. <laughs> that's, that's something else. But uh, but so we're going to wait and see what the U.S. Supreme Court says in that South Carolina case, but that's the most recent case that, that we got to keep our eyes on. And I'm assuming that South Carolina case will be litigated before the North Carolina case. And so will that inform what we can expect to see in terms of um, some some uh, decision in North Carolina? It will inform it. But again, you know, the, 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 the reason why I keep coming back to Cooper v. Harris is Cooper was the governor of North Carolina. Harris was the plaintiff that we represented. Um, there is a case out of North Carolina that actually says what the law is. And, you know, it applies nationally and the, North, and the South Carolina case will apply nationally. But the facts here are, in my view, you know, pretty, pretty well, you know, the law here is pretty well settled, depending on what the facts are. And so um, the North South Carolina case will inform it. But uh, but I feel good about the law uh, that prohibits racial gerrymandering and intentional discrimination. Right. The, the law should presumably inform it as well. But but here we Correct. are. Uh, what is the partisan makeup of this new Republican drawn map in North Carolina versus the map that had been in place? Yeah, so this is this is like a good inf information moment for the audience. I hope, hope everyone just like takes a second to digest what I'm about to say. North Carolina, if you for people who don't know it, is as closely divided a 50-50 state as you can find. It has two Republican senators. It has a Democratic governor elected statewide and a Democratic attorney general elected statewide. In the last presidential election, it was one of the close, most closely divided states. We didn't focus a lot on it because... Uh, you know, because Joe Biden had won the Electoral College. Uh, but uh, I think Donald Trump won it by a point or two. And so you might think in a 7-7, seven, seven, so you might think in an even, even state, you'd have a 7-7 seven, seven map. And in fact, that's what you had when the map was drawn by nonpartisan experts hired by the court to draw it, right? You have currently have a 7-7 seven, seven map. Now, you might think, okay, Republicans are drawing it, so they're going to give, give themselves a little bit of an advantage, and they're going to make it 8-6. No, they made a 10-4 uh, map, maybe even an 11-3 map, depending on the year. Like, they went for the gusto. Yeah. You know, they 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 went extreme gerrymandering. And it's important, again, to understand that though they their goal was an extreme partisan gerrymander. The way they did that, the way they did that was by taking groups of minority voters and moving them around. And they treated these voters as a function of their race. They treated, they, they engaged in racial stereotyping about how they're going to vote, and they moved them around. And that is uh, simply out of bounds when it comes to drawing districts. And that's what the Republicans lost on the last time I beat them in the U.S. Supreme Court. Okay, so this issue is obviously being litigated in the courts right now. Will this be, uh, will we see a decision from, from this lawsuit before the 2024 election? So unfortunately, probably not. Okay. Um, you know, unfortunately, it is already December. Um, this got, the, the new map got drawn very late. We are going to litigate this as quickly and as aggressively as we can. And what, you know, and if we can catch some breaks and maybe something happens, it gets decided before, but, but that's unlikely. I think it's going to be decided for 2026. But my message to Democrats is, 
you know, it's disappointing this happening for 2024, but I promise you when we get to 2025 and 2026, you're going to be glad this lawsuit's going on. And my message to Republicans is this. I will never give up. You you all know it. You know it. I will, we will, my team will litigate this case until the last possible opportunity to protect voting rights is exhausted. And so you are in for a fight. And in the end, we're going to win. Well, that underscores the importance of what Mark and his team does. So for anybody watching right now, if you want to support Mark and his team, please, again, make sure to sign up for Democracy Docket. The link is right here on the screen. It's also in the post description of this video. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. I'm Mark Elias. This is Democracy Watch.